joining us this evening is Albert Ramirez. Albert Ramirez. And we're so happy that Brother Albert could join us this evening. And this is a very special evening, Friday, the 18th of December. You got it the, right. <laughs> the year of the, our Lord, 2020. We're getting close to 2021, mm -hmm. and we believe it's going to be a great year. And Amen. God is getting ready to do something extraordinary. We feel that in our spirits, and uh, you know, you 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 probably have to just turn off the news because uh, the the prophets of Baal have just been bombarding, bombarding uh, our ears. But we have turned that off, and I have been tuning into the Holy Spirit into the word of God and God's report is what we believe. So mm -hmm. God is good and God is moving by his Holy Spirit. We had a fantastic uh, service and live broadcast uh, uh, in Ukraine this morning. It was evening there. Uh, the Lord, we heard a powerful testimony of how God healed the man last uh, weekend when we had last Friday, we had the broadcast. He wasn't able to watch it till Saturday. Uh, a welder who uh, whose knees were just killing him. He couldn't get on his knees. He, he wasn't had to. That old either. He was not mm -hmm. very old. He's on the worship team there at the church, mm -hmm. and the Lord healed him. And the interesting thing was, it wasn't during the live broadcast. It was the next day because he couldn't join during the live broadcast. And that just tells us something that it is not just during this live broadcast, but as you watch or rewatch, you share that same power and anointing of the Holy Spirit is there. I mean, he's a, he's a welder. He's got to be on his knees a lot. And he just said, you know, this week I had a lot of work on my knees and I realized my knees don't hurt. I mean, he said, <laughs> I had such bad pain. I couldn't, mm -hmm. I mean, it was just, it was just so to have to mm -hmm. work on my knees. And then I realized, wow, God healed me. Hallelujah. Well, Amen. he's not the only one. God has been touching people. And uh, Nina, what, um, what, what, what do you say <laughs> i say that god is our healer and you don't need to suffer you just need to trust god you need to declare and decree his word the word of god says in james 5 16 that the prayer of a righteous persistent prayer of a righteous or a fervent prayer of a righteous man or woman produces wonderful results so we are trusting god and the bible also says that he heals all our diseases so there's no ifs, ands, or buts. God is the healer. You can be Amen. healed today. Amen. And we're so happy that uh, Brother mm -hmm. Albert is able to join us this evening. And uh, Brother Albert's a good friend. He is a prophet of God, an yes. evangelist, and Bible teacher. And uh, we're so happy that he could join us this evening. Brother Albert, would Amen. you say what God is speaking to you? Yeah, it's, it's just uh, wanted to share some things tonight, too, but I just I just felt the Lord leading me to share a few things because we look at what's happening right now in the world and, and especially in our country and everything seems to be chaotic. Um, and we and then believers at times will tend to think that God is not here or God is not working or God is is not doing anything, but God is doing everything. God is in control of everything. And one of the things I wrote down is I just felt the spirit of God saying is that um, that God allowed this, what's happening. Everything you see happening right now, God allows it. And in fact, just, just like Jesus was in the fourth chapter of Luke, Jesus was led by the spirit to be tempted of the devil. And, and what it produced, you know, caused him to stand on the word of God as, as, as Christ the man. But also it caused him to be... Uh, filled with spirit because he came out of there more more anointed by the holy spirit and a lot of times i believe god allows things like to us allows us to go through certain things in order to prepare us for what he's about to do and i and i really believe it was um uh it's what god's doing now and in the 25th chapter of matthew that verses 1 through 12 it's about the you know the, the story is about the the parable of the the 10 virgins you know, five of them were prepared with, with oil and they prepared themselves with that oil. They provided themselves with that oil and five of them didn't. Uh, the five that prepared themselves with the oil, the scripture says that they were filled with wisdom. You know, they had wisdom to do that. And the, and 
that's important for us to know we have to use wisdom to draw closer to God through his word, through the scriptures, to, to have communion and fellowship with, with the Holy Spirit uh, that God has given us to lead us, to guide us, to empower us. Yes, and as we do that, then we will see uh, uh, not only uh, uh, we, will, we will get the wisdom. We will get the wisdom for when and be prepared for when our bride, our bride, our, our groom comes, which is Christ. And that's what the church, I believe, is going through this. God is, is the, I, I remember sharing on this, uh, the dream I had, that, and I know it was from the Lord about the water, the river up in the mountains in the house that, we, you know, I closed all the windows and the whole house was, the water had rose and, you know, over went, overflowed the banks and rose above the roof of that house. It was shaking the house and we were praying in the middle, but it was right afterwards when I, I could, I could hear the, the water uh, receding that, that had been shaking the house and I opened the windows and it was like a new beginning. And that's what God is doing in the church. He's, he's preparing the church, get, getting the church ready um, through, through the things that they're experiencing. There's people that are wise enough to, to commune with God and to fill their, their, uh, their lamps, their hearts with, with, the, with the spirit of God, with uh, fellowship and communion with the Holy Spirit, and of course, with the word of God, which is spirit and life. So we have to do that. We can't look at the circumstances. We can't uh, just sit there and think that God is not doing anything because guaranteed he is doing things. Absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. And you know, as you say that, I'm just prompted to, uh, um, to the fact that when there is persecution is when the church grows. Okay. Um, Amen. During the time of persecution in the early church, when the church just started to go out to other areas as they were supposed to and Amen. preach the gospel. And uh, we've got <laughs> friends uh, watching in China. We want to welcome our sister Neba and people mm -hmm. all over the world that are mm -hmm. watching. God richly bless you in Canada, U.S., uh, Argentina, Cuba, uh, Ukraine, uh, Russia, wherever you're watching. Um, we, we just want to say we're praying not just for America. We are praying for the nations. We are praying for your needs. Uh, we have been focusing in America because America needs revival. And I just want to say wherever the church has been under persecution, and one of those places is China, we have seen tremendous growth. And uh, so uh, we don't like persecution. We don't like to be in a tough spot. And, and we've been praying for America, and we've been praying for the election. We've been praying for the president. You know what? Uh, the, as we look on this, we realize it's, it's much bigger. It's much more than an election. It's what God is trying to do in the church. Amen. And in the midst of all of this, the church seems to finally, maybe not all the church but some in the church are truly waking up and really getting serious about prayer and serious about God and that is as brother Albert I think was trying to say what God is trying to do it's not just about an election it's not just uh, like that it's about what God is purposing to do on earth and is specifically through the church of Jesus Amen. Christ the church Amen. has in many cases fallen asleep and and had become just uh, actually, you know, the government has deemed the church irrele irrelevant here in America and mm -hmm. by, by virtue of the lockdowns and so on. And, and now the church has to regain that position of authority in that place of, uh, of having some rights, which should never have been in question. So um, I believe that during this time, people are truly waking up. Not all. Some people are throwing in the towel. Some people are getting discouraged. Courage. And that always happens when persecution comes. I mean, the true believers get stronger and get off the fence, but uh, the other, some of them uh, just throw in the towel and, and just go uh, into a different lifestyle or, or just have a, a nominal belief in, in God. But that is not what Jesus is looking for. But I began by saying that I just, I really anticipate that there has been a shift in the spirit realm. We don't yet fully see this with our, um, uh, in, a, so in the physical realm, but you know, all truth is parallel as Brother Morris used to say Amen. often. Mm -hmm. and, and it is true. And sometimes 
Um, and so what happens in the spirit realm is, is also uh, parallelly uh, uh, happen, begins to happen in the physical realm. Sometimes we think we, we react to things in the physical realm and then begin to react to the spiritual realm where in reality, we should be leading the way in the spirit realm because we are ruling with Christ in the heavenlies. Not Amen. physically, we're not there in the heavens, but spiritually with authority, we are sitting in heaven heavenly places. We have authority in the name of Jesus Christ, and we have not been exerting that authority as a church. So this is a time to do that. That is what we're doing in these Pray for America sessions. We're, um, we're not only praying, but we're trying to help people to understand how to pray, not just a simple prayer, Lord, bless my country or bless my family. That's wonderful, but you got to do a lot more than that. You got to go a lot deeper than just that. And so we're just so happy that Brother Albert is here with us because one of the areas that he has been teaching on uh, a lot is the authority of the believer. And so, Brother Albert, uh, could you just touch on that a little bit? Well, Yes, because we are the voice, and we we as the body of Christ is the the church. We are also the mouthpiece of God on this earth. I mean, God could, you know, uh, theoretically, God could just speak, you know, out of the heavens, and He's done that before. But He uses man to speak, and we are the voice. If we if we are the body of Christ, we also are the voice of God, and that's why we need a close relationship with the Holy spirit to know the will of God. You know, the, the kingdom come, the, the, our father prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Uh, the one that, the one, the ones that are supposed to declare that is, is God's people. And not only that, uh, we also release, uh, as, as the body of Christ and as, as, uh, releasing the kingdom of God, preaching the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven, is we also can release the judgments of God. I mean, and I, I think people have a, a misunderstanding of judgments, thinking that that's for the future and that's for when God judges everything. But the scriptures tell us, and there's many places in Corinthians and different scriptures that talk about how God's people, we are to judge things. We are to judge things in the body of Christ. We are to judge things uh, we, we're not to judge the unbeliever as, you know, condemning them or anything, but we are to judge things and circumstances that don't line up with the kingdom of God here on earth. And, and, and we can't do that without authority. And, and the only way we do that is by the power of the Holy Spirit uh, through the words, uh, the words of, word of God. And of course, the direction and guidance of the Holy Spirit in doing so. And, um, uh, you know, in fact, you, you have, uh, you have scripture like in 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 Romans eight nineteen where it says the the earth is waiting the earth is waiting the creation everything else that God has created is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God and that means to me what that means is that the earth the, the all of what God has created waits for God's children to act like the the authority and the dominion that He placed them over everything that uh, you know like Rome, uh, Psalm eight says that over all the works of his hands, all the works of God's hands, God has put uh, man over, you know, uh, Psalm 115, I think it is verse 15, he says, the heavens and the heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth has he given to the sons of men. So we are the authority of God here. And like I said, I believe that all these things that are happening right now, it's it's shaking the church. It's that like that dream I had, it's shaking the church, the house of God. Uh, was it First Peter four seventeen? I think he says that judgment must begin first in the house of God. So I mean, it's shaking. It's God is judging the things, the carnal things that that don't, that can't impact or affect anything or cannot uh, bring the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. And I'm not saying, you know, that we are to establish God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven right now. Uh, completely, that's going to be done when Christ returns. But also. But we do, and we can have an impact right now as far as judging things that are taking place, uh, releasing God's justice and God's judgment. And that is that has been released. I am convinced, no matter what anybody would say, anyone would say, I am convinced that as uh, as certain individuals or people or believers that know they're God, that know, have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, that we have released judgments uh, and, and judge justice. Uh, upon the, the 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 lawlessness that's prevalent in our society, in our country, and worldwide, 
Uh, so if if God's going to have a, a body, a church that's going to be able to speak to these things, then we have to prepare ourselves to do so. Uh, and also uh, Habakkuk, we got Habakkuk 2.14 that says, the earth shall be filled with the knowledge, the knowledge, knowing the knowledge of the glory of God. The glory of God, I don't think we all understand it. You know, I think... Me- most of us don't understand it, the glory of God. But I believe it's a it's a manifestation of God's glory in His body, in His His people, in the body of Christ to be able to act like Jesus acted. Here we're we're supposed to be conformed to the image of Christ that talks about in Romans eight. So I mean, I believe that God is doing that through through the circumstances that we're involved with now, the COVID uh, nineteen pandemic, and then also the election and, and the corruption that's being revealed. So, but, but God always, always judges that even now, not, not just when judgment time comes at, you know, when the end of all things happens, but even right now, God judges that on the earth. God doesn't want that. He did it in times past. All you have to do is look in the old Testament. He's done it in times past where he had judged it amongst his people. He judged his people first, actually the Israelites. And then he judged people around them. That were walking in the in in the like Sodom and Gomorrah, for example, you know, he brought down his judgment upon it because of the 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 horrific sin and and and, and uh, un- lawlessness that was going on. But he does judge things now here on earth now before the final judgment, you yes. know. And I believe that the church is is supposed to be a part of that and we're supposed to be filled with the glory of God. And I believe that there is going to be an impartation of the glory of God that's going to empower the church to do even a greater, uh, to release even a greater, um, what's the word I want to use, a manifestation of God's glory on earth and to be a testimony, to be a testimony uh, unto those that do not believe, a testimony to them that uh, who is actually Lord and God of this earth. Amen. Uh, Amen. And, and, And in Jesus' prayer, uh, he taught us to pray, your kingdom come, your will be done. What does that Amen. mean? You see, God doesn't force his way into the affairs of men. He waits for us mm-hmm. to invite his rule, invite his governorship over uh, government over the affairs of men. He doesn't force himself. But if we invite him into our life, first of all, and then into our home, our family, our circumstances, he is waiting to get involved. Well, we also are inviting him to get involved in the affairs of this nation. For truly, we believe that God has purpose for this nation to be a shining light uh, to, uh, for the gospel of Jesus Christ to go forth out of this nation to other nations, as it has for many years. And Amen. there are people trying to uh, divert that, trying to uh, subvert that, trying to change that. But God's purposes, and God is a covenant-keeping God, and that covenant Amen. that was made by the founders of this nation, God remembers that covenant, and God honors covenant, and God is coming through. Now, as Brother Albert says, judgment comes. It's not just in the final day or the final judgment, but, you know, God is patient, and God is long-suffering, and so because he doesn't judge immediately, people sometimes get the wrong impression that God is okay with them just sinning and doing whatever they're doing. Well, God is just patiently waiting for that person to repent. But Absolutely. if they do not repent, judgment right. must be met. Uh, God is a just God as much as he is a loving God. So he gives us opportunity after opportunity, but that moment comes when enough is enough, as Brother Albert was uh, pointing well, out. So, but, but you know, uh, God... Uh, um, uh, is is a loving God too, and and there are people who are watching us right now. There are people who have been writing us. People are suffering with COVID. People are suffering with uh, various diseases and problems. And, um, and and we want to pray for those because there are people mm-hmm. in, in dire need. There are people that have suffered financially and greatly financially, not just here in the United States, but in many nations of the world because of the lockdowns, because of uh, losing jobs. Uh, businesses being closed, uh, and, and uh, at least in, in the United States, many people had gotten some uh, some help in some ways, um, but 
but in many nations, people have gotten no help from their governments because their governments are poor mm -hmm. and they have no ability. Uh, and if they got any kind of help, it's very, very minimal. And so I just want to say this, we've, uh, we've uh, uh, sent, um, we just sent some help to Nepal to bless some of the needy pastors and we're going to try to do that to some other nations as well. And we want to encourage anyone who wants to be a blessing this Christmas, don't just expect the blessing of God in your life, but be a blessing. So, so in someone mm -hmm. else's life, find somebody who has a bigger need than you have. And so into that life and bless them and you will be blessed by the Lord. And, and I mean, sowing by praying, sowing by giving, sowing by being merciful and kind, but also by giving financially, and God will reward you because God will not be a debtor to any man. What's interesting is a man who was sharing his testimony on the broadcast this morning in Ukraine who was healed mm -hmm. of his niece. Uh, um, he also had been gathering money, uh, slowly saving to get a car because they live out of the city, and he needs transportation to get to work, get to church. He's very active in the church, and uh, he was slowly gathering a, a little little bit of money gathering and gathering it and then one day the uh, uh, a group of young people were going on a missions uh, uh, trip and the Lord spoke to him says give it all give all that money for, to them for that missions journey and he said wow okay Lord so he just did you know he just obeyed the Lord and Amen. God about it but she says you know what God gave me, God gave us, uh, you know, uh, 10 times what I had given and we have a car now. It's not a big car, but we have a car. So he says, so, you know, I didn't do it because I was expecting to get 10 times or a certain amount back. I just gave it because I was obedient to the Lord. Amen. You know uh, when you are obedient to God, God will not be a debtor to you or to me or any man. If we give we sow into his kingdom. He gives us back. And when God gives back, we might give to him with a spoonful, but he gives us back with a shovel. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. God is good. It, it's a principle. God's established it, you know. But we want to pray for people, uh, right. Brother Albert. There are people. Walter, Walter can I share something really quick? Yeah, is that, please, um, please. As you were mentioning about that, there's uh, about the judgments. And I mean, and then judgments, you, we can't just interpret that as just being, you know, I judge that's wrong, wrong, wrong. But there are things that are wrong. They're contrary to the word of God, and God does release that judgment. But he does say also in Isaiah 26, 9, I think it is, he says, when your judgments, God, God's word is saying, that God's prophet Isaiah is saying, when your judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants thereof learn, learn righteousness. You know, and, and that's, that's exactly what's going to be happening because um, the righteousness is gone. <laughs> you, you know, the right standing of God's people before him. Uh, I mean, in the way the church is right now, uh, there's a lot of things that need to be straightened out. So, and, and brought back into order in, in an agreement with God and his word. And of course, God's love, you know. So just wanted to share that because that scripture came to me about when his judgments are in the earth and there are, things that are being judged right now i don't think i don't know if people understand that but there are things being judged right now by god and everybody thinks it's the government it's the covid it's this it's that it's more it's god actually doing a work in this world and people need to realize it and not to lose hope but to realize that god is doing something it's god that's controlling everything it's not the world it's not china it's not the u.s it's it's god that's that's allowing certain things to take place he's planned all these things and, and it's and it's stirring up his people and that's that's a good thing and so we shouldn't lose hope no matter who's president no matter what uh, what the the instructions are with the covid uh, virus but um we should never we should do not lose hope and don't ever lose hope because god is definitely still in control absolutely absolutely and and one thing we have been emphasizing every uh in every broadcast mm. is don't look at the bigness of your need right. don't look at the bigness Amen. of the problem but instead put your focus put your eyes on jesus 
He mm. is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has not changed. His power has not changed, and his will has not changed. And so just because the circumstances are different or more difficult, it does not in any way uh, make God's power of any lesser, uh, uh, any lesser or in any way less effective. God's power is the same. His love is the same, mm -hmm. and he does love you, and he wants to encourage you. We want to encourage you because some of you may be all alone. Um, you know, maybe you don't have family members with you, and you've been forced in a lockdown. I mean, in some places uh, in the world, we understand the lockdowns are very severe and, uh, and not able to go to uh, your regular church meetings. So some people have been tuning in to these broadcasts and similar broadcasts mm -hmm. and getting fed here and getting prayed for and being encouraged. And, and we're happy to be able to help. We're not trying to replace your local church by any means, but we understand the circumstances. We know that there are many people who are in very tough situations right now, and we want to pray for you. We want to pray for your needs. And uh, uh, Brother Albert, would you pray for people out there who are discouraged, who are in need, whatever the Lord leads you to pray for right now? Sure. Sure. Father, we just come before your precious throne of grace. We thank you, Lord, that we have a privilege to do so through Christ, our Lord. Lord, it's a, we lift up these people that are watching, Lord, those that are out there, like Walter said, there are those that are out there that are alone or, or physically incapable of, of going anywhere. Lord, we just, first of all, send forth your word, Lord, of healing, Lord, and those that are not physically healthy, Lord, in Jesus' name, we, uh, according to Psalm 107, 20, we send forth your word in the name of Jesus and heal them, for your name does heal them. Your word, your uh, your precious blood, Lord Jesus, speaks, and it speaks of healing. It's a covenant, as Walter mentioned. So, Father, we thank you. We just release your, your healing power of the Holy Spirit to heal those who need healing that are watching, those that need deliverance that are watching, Lord, and also especially the, those who may be watching that are that don't know you, Jesus, as their Lord and Savior. That there's no better way to be comforted by the Holy Spirit as Jesus comes into your heart, the Spirit of Christ, and the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you to comfort you. The Holy Spirit is known as the Comforter, so Lord, He will comfort you in this time of need, whether it's financial. We have, we also have, Father, we're reminded of the the three. Um, uh, lepers, Lord, that were in Israel, when they thought that Israel was surrounded by their enemy, by hundreds of thousands of, of, of uh, armies around them, uh, and, and were starving them out of their 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 of Jerusalem, out of Israel, and when they were starving, them, they, they they besieged Israel. Lord, those three, those three. Uh, I mean, one 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 man asked, you know, the prophet came and said that tomorrow. Uh, uh, you know, the, everybody was starving. They were killing babies and eating them. Uh, but what, but one man asked uh, the, ca the 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 captain of the the king. He said, he said, if, if God opened the wisdom of heaven, is it possible to you know that that would happen? In other words, he proclaimed that the next morning. Uh, that God would God would bless and God would turn things around. And the next morning, he got he de he declared that God would turn things around. He says that that you know a thing of wheat would just sell for a few pennies here. And the guy didn't believe him uh, because it just looked you know if you look at the army surrounding everybody starving, they're eating their children. It looked terrible. But the, but the the next morning. You know, the three lepers went out and they and God caused the, the armies that were attacking Israel to, to hear a voice uh, of an, a mighty army coming against them. They all fled and left all their food and everything behind. So they were able to do that. The next day, everything, food was selling. And it seemed impossible, is my point. Everything seemed impossible to the people inside of that of Jerusalem in the walled city. And they were... Uh, but God did provide exactly as the prophet said. So yeah. God will meet all your financial needs. God yeah. he promised to do so. Not all that, even though it seems impossible, just trust him and ask him, you know, ask God for his help and you'll see God's power and God's love for you manifested in his provision. So Father, we thank you for meeting all the needs of your people according to your word. And we just give you praise and glory and honor for healing those that are sick lord in jesus name lord i thank you for, uh, first and foremost we also exercise authority and dominion over fear lord that fear is one of the greatest uh 
viruses there is in this world. So we exercise authority in the name of Jesus, binding the spirit of fear on your people or on those that are watching, Lord. We exercise authority and dominion over that, binding it, casting it out of them in Jesus' name. So, Lord, we give you all the praise and all the glory, Lord Jesus, and thank you for meeting the needs of those watching in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 And Father, we bring before you those that may be affected by COVID. Yes, Lord. And yes, uh, Lord. typically yes, we Lord. want to include here Christina, Christina <laughs> who had been moved yeah. to overflow curse that virus in our arena here in Sacramento area. And Lord, we, we lift up Christina. We lift up Margaret in Seattle. We lift up Ivy in Los Angeles. And we lift up others who are hearing and watching us right now. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I come against that virus and I command them to and leave their bodies right now in Jesus. And Father, I speak healing over this, healing over Christina, over my Margaret, over Ivy and others who may be watching in the name of yes. Jesus Christ, Jesus those that have had COVID in their family, we rebuke that yes. COVID. Yes. We command it to die yes. and come out of their body. Father, heal them right now, we pray in Jesus' name. Totally and completely heal their lungs, heal their body in Jesus' name right now. And Lord, we thank you for healing that one of their knees right now. That he's being healed of your knees. Receive your healing. Put your faith in action. Try to do what you could not do in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The eyes, somebody's eyes are being healed right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Someone's had a lot of headaches, uh, just uh, strong headaches. Receive your healing right now in Jesus' name. Yes. You're being healed right now. Receive your healing in Jesus' name. Cheryl. 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 Uh, you may be watching now or watching yes. later. Yes. Receive your healing in Jesus' name. That's a word of yes. knowledge. Yes. Cheryl out there who needs healing, receive your healing yes. right now in Jesus' name. Heal in Jesus' name. And Lord, Jesus we're just name. Moving any fears Praise in Jesus' God. name of sickness or diseases. And Lord, we just thank you that by your stripes they were healed. They were healed, Lord Jesus. We give you praise and thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord. 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 Yes. Yeah, those, you know, let me, can I share some real, a prayer real, a prayer real quick is I feel that somebody's there's a, there's a few people out there right now that are contemplating suicide. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, in the name of Jesus, Father, we just lift those people up that are watching and they're even contemplating suicide because of the fear that's upon them. Uh, and, that, and, and that suicide, it's a spirit. It is a spirit. I know from personal experience, a uh, depression, Fear is it's a spirit. So we take take authority in the name of Jesus, according to Matthew 16, 19. These are keys that Jesus gave us. We take authority in binding the spirit of fear and suicide on those people that are watching, Lord, that are being tempted by the enemy in Jesus' name and cast it off of them. Lord, we loosen according to Matthew 16, 19. We loosen faith and we loosen love upon them. We loosen peace in the name of Jesus and joy the joy of the Lord, that is their strength. We loosen it upon them. And Father, we just thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name that it is done, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that they will come to know you in a greater way. We just ask that Christ be formed in them and by the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, would you just simply repeat this prayer after me? It's nothing complicated. Just say, Dear Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Dear Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I admit that I'm a sinner. I admit that I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that he died on the cross. I believe that he died on the cross. I believe that he resurrected from the dead. I believe. I believe he resurrected from the dead. And I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. And, and I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me all of my sins. Forgive, Forgive me all of my sins. And wash me in the blood of Jesus. And wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ. Save me, O oh God. Save, save, us, save us, O Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you pray that prayer sincerely, Jesus has heard that prayer and he is coming into your heart right now. Receive him into your heart and begin to thank him 
for mm -hmm. saving you, for forgiving your sins mm -hmm. and try to find a church. I know that we're under lockdowns in different places, but find a body of believers that believe in the word of God, that preach the word of God and become a part of that. Find other Christians and try to get acquainted with them so that you can get encouragement and so you, that you can be fed the word of God and keep tuning in if you've got no other place to go for now. But um, we just want to bring up other needs. Um, uh, there are, uh, uh, we've been praying for the nation and I believe that God is, has heard those prayers. Mm -hmm. God is answering. Amen. Uh, I believe that those seeds that were planted in prayer, they are giving results and we are beginning to see some of that. We don't see everything in the physical realm, but that does not mean Amen. that something isn't happening and Amen. things aren't happening. So don't give up praying because just because you don't see anything happening in your physical eyes doesn't mean that God's not working behind the scenes. And he is, we know it, he's faithful and he will not. Never leave us or forsake us. He, he loves this country and he has a covenant with this country and he's going to come through for us. Amen. And Nina, yeah. you had a prayer. I wanted you to pray again Some over prayer. the nation. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but Brother Albert, is there anything else you felt right now that you wanted to pray for or share with the people out there? Well, just to release, we just when I asked God and, and, and wanted to remind people that the prayer of agreement, you know, when we agree, the scripture says in, in Matthew 18, 19, it says that when two or three are gathered in his name, and which we are right now, we're all gathered in the name of Jesus together, praying uh, over this broadcast here. And God does hear, God hears, you know, was it Daniel 923, I think it is, where it says uh, God was speaking to Daniel. Daniel was praying, and they, God sent an angel to tell him. He said that the moment you prayed, the answer was given. The moment you prayed, we need to realize that, that, that God hears your prayers. You know, and we walk by faith and not by sight, by what we see or by our five senses. We walk by faith, and we're to trust God by faith that he has heard and answered our prayers. So we just stand in agreement for those that are those needs that are being lifted up, uh, the needs that 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 our people have on their on their hearts and minds right now that are watching, and that God would meet those needs. Amen and amen. And Nina, would you go ahead and lead us in this prayer right now? Yes, Lord, we are in the battle for the soul of this nation. We have humbled ourselves and we've turned from our wicked ways and we are calling on your mighty power to save us yes, in Lord. Jesus' name. Lord, we ask for you to extend mercy to the United States of America. Lord, yes, judge Lord. the enemies of this nation that, ex that oppose yes. your will. Father, we declare and we decree yes. that your plans and your purposes for this yes. nation will not be thwarted by an enemy that has been defeated on a cross. Lord, Amen. your word says that you gave us the authority over all the power of the enemy. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bind the spirit of deception. We bind the spirit of Amen. enemy that is risen in this country and we command it to die and it can no longer manifest itself because greater are you lord that is in us than he that is in the world Jesus. the enemy has been defeated he has Amen. no power over us we declare that jesus is lord Amen. over this country and over the outcome of this election father we thank you that you are exposing all the corruption and the people and involved yes, Lord. Stand against your plans and purposes. Father, we pray that your light shine and expose what is hidden in the darkness. And we thank you that you are going before us in your supernatural power as we declare and stand on your word. Just as the walls of Jericho came falling down, the walls of corruption are falling down in Jesus' name. The Amen. Lord, you said you give righteousness and justice to all who are treated yes. unfairly, according to Psalms 103, verse 6. Father, so we Amen. declare righteousness and justice yes. rule in our country, and it will bring complete truth over the election results in yes, Jesus' Lord. name. Father, we put our complete trust in you, and we look to Amen. you for the salvation yes. of the Lord. Yes. Father, we pray that your kingdom come, your will will be done yes. on earth as it is in heaven in the Amen. United States of America. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, well, Jesus. We're so glad that you joined us this evening. And uh, we want to encourage you to share this with your friends, with those you know, your loved ones, and especially those that have a need of prayer, a need of a touch of God, Amen. a need of a breakthrough in their lives. There are many such people out there. Share this with them to encourage them uh, in order for them to also not only be prayed for, but to begin praying. Um, let me tell you, God is getting ready to do something extraordinary in this Amen. country and in the nations of the world. It's not just in Amen. America. He's getting ready to pour out of his spirit upon Amen. all flesh, meaning on people from all nationalities, from all people groups. It, no one, it, there's a word that needed received early this year that no one will be immune to this move of God when the Holy Spirit begins wow. to move. Is that what the That's Lord right. showed you? No, that this is the end day revival and no one, absolutely no one will be immune to see what God is going to do or feel the touch of yeah. God in their lives. So God is getting ready to do something powerful and uh, it may not look like it when you go outside mm. and, and you look around or you listen to, uh, uh, to, mm. to a lot of the news and things like that. So don't listen to that. Instead, look to God. Look at Amen. the of God. If you start looking at problems, they're just going to look bigger in your eyes. Instead, look at the greatness of mm. God. And those problems in comparison to God will not look big at all. Mm -hmm. In fact, they'll get smaller and smaller as you yeah. make God bigger and bigger in your in That's your heart, right. in your life, in your mind. So focus on him. Believe God's report. Believe God's word. Believe his servants. Uh, don't throw in the mm -hmm. towel. Don't start uh, accusing the prophets that have prophesied certain things. Because just because something didn't happen the next day. But let me tell you, God has heard the prayers. God knows mm -hmm. what he is doing. But we've got to continue to persevere mm -hmm. in prayer. We've been in a, engaged in a spiritual battle and, yes. and we're not going to throw in the the towel we're just going to keep going because god is getting ready to do something now it may not be the whole church but there's certainly going to be that remnant there's going to be a part of that church that is going to be on fire but i tell you when the holy spirit begins to be poured out as nina said no one will be immune. The Holy Spirit is going to be poured out in the nations. We're going to see great move of God in China, in Ukraine, in mm -hmm. Russia, uh, here in America, Amen. and in other parts of the mm -hmm. world. Hallelujah. So just be in anticipation, right. because when you are in anticipation, you will see, uh, you will understand more clearly what God is getting ready to do. You know, sometimes the answer comes in a different format than you expected. Mm -hmm. So don't reject it if it comes in a different way than you thought it should have come but the answer does come god is answering prayer mm -hmm. and god is getting ready to do something marvelous right. and uh, I, I believe we're going to have a great christmas mm -hmm. and i believe that next year the power of god is going to be moving in such a way uh, as, as we in our lifetimes have not Never seen, seen yet so yeah. get ready get fasten your seat belts and expect a miracle <laughs> expect a miracle uh, brother albert mm -hmm. is there anything else you wanted to share yeah, just uh, just like you were saying, uh, just wanted to agree with you and have everyone to to remember the scripture says, and I think it's in First Corinthians fourteen. I don't remember exactly where uh, which verse, but it says that there are many voices in the world. Many voices. You got the voice of the devil. You got the voice of the world. Uh, you know, uh, speaking many different things. Governments speaking many different things. It says that none of them are without signification. In other words, there's a purpose for every voice that's out there. Uh, and we are, I mentioned earlier, we are the voice of God here. And it's in, like Walter was saying, it's, it's extremely important not to be listening to those other voices because it will manipulate your way of thinking. It will have an impact on your thought life and bring fear. And of course the devil uh, will, will also magnify the, the negative thoughts and, and, and words in your mind to bring fears and doubts and unbelief. And that's not what we want. We want to believe and trust God that what God says. And, I, and I've noticed that uh, people, and I've, I've tried to encourage people to just get into the word of God because it is spirit and it's life. And if you get people thinking on what God says, you know, uh, uh, you know, with uh, first uh, uh, Philippians chapter four, 
Uh, it talks about, it tells us how to think whatsoever is good, lovely and of good report. Don't think on that negative things because the devil will amplify that in your mind and cause you um, sometimes even physical ailments because of, of the way you're thinking. And scriptures tells us in Proverbs 23, seven is a man thinketh so is he. So it's important to keep, keep your thoughts uh, clean of negative words uh, that are out there. There's vo negative voices that are out there because those can definitely bring you down and bring discouragement to a lot of people. So keep your eyes on the Lord. Keep your, uh, like, like Peter, when he got out of the boat mm -hmm. and walked on water, keep, as long as he kept his eyes on the Lord, he didn't sink. Uh, and that's what we need to do. And also, but keep to hear what God says. He, Jesus told us in Mark chapter four, he says, take heed how you hear. This, uh, he tells us to be careful how we hear. And he also tells us to be to be careful, take heed what you hear. Mm -hmm. And it is important what you hear. So uh, try not to listen too much of the, the, the negative negativity, the negative thoughts and, and uh, voices out there and try to and, and set your mind on the things of God, you know, the things above spiritual things, God's things, uh, and the, especially the word of God, because it is quick, it is powerful. And it is sharper than it is. It's able, uh, it's able, the word of God is able to keep your mind in peace and keep it in, uh, with a, with a confidence and a faith that, that will cause you to be more than an overcomer. Amen. 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 I just sense brother Albert, that there are people out there that have, uh, succumbed to fear and fear is yes, really they have. on them. And, and we need to pray for that right now and just break that, Hope yes. that that yes. fear has over them. Let's agree and let's yes. pray for those yes. people. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for those that are watching us, listening to us right now, who have uh, fallen prey to fear. And fear has gotten a hold of them. Jesus in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that out of them, a fear over your life. Be free in the name of Jesus Christ. You are set free right now in Jesus' name. I cast you out. Come out of that. In Jesus' name. Be set free right now. We just thank you. We agree as touching this thing. Right now, you're living in Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Praise God. God is setting you free right now. In Jesus' name. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Just, just believe right now. Begin to praise God. You know, praise is a powerful weapon that. That yes. you as a believer have as you begin to praise God, your focus goes from the problem to the solution. Yes, Jesus Lord. Christ is the answer, He is the solution. In so Jesus. just begin to praise Him, begin to thank Him, begin to lift Jesus. Him up right now. Father, we praise you, Father. We Jesus. thank you. We <laughs> think that greater are you who yes, are in us Lord. than thank He that is yeah. in the world. And we yeah. thank yeah. you that we can do all <laughs> things through. Christ strengthens us. And so again, we bind the spirit of fear and we release confidence. We release peace. We release wholeness into those that are watching us. Right now, in Jesus' name, I release shalom, wholeness into your life receive it in the name yep. of Jesus Christ yeah, and Jesus. be healed, be made whole in your spirit, mind, and body in the name of Jesus yeah. Christ. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise, Praise be to God. Praise faith, Lord. hope, and love. Those three abide, the scriptures say, yeah. and they do abide. Faith, hope, and love. Amen. Repeat we just that release that. Brother Albert. Pardon me? Repeat that once again. Faith, the scripture says in Corinthians, faith, love, and hope. At the end of the love chapter, I think, or the 12th yeah. chapter of the, of the gifts. But it says, faith, hope, these three abide, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of them is love. And that's God's love for you. And perfect love, uh, what is it? First John 417, 417. Uh, uh, perfect love casts out fear. And when you, when you know that God loves you perfectly and he, his love will never leave you because he, he'll always love you, even when you make mistakes, that God's, it's his perfect love for you that will cast out any fear that's trying to manipulate you in your way of thinking or manipulate you or cause condemnation to you or whatever. But God's perfect love will cast out that fear. Yeah. If when, when we come to a, a revelation and understanding of, of how much God loves us, it will cast out that fear. That is absolutely correct. Uh, God's love 
if we know that God truly loves us and he Amen. does, what have we to fear? If God is for us, Paul said, Amen. who can be against us? What can be against us? And God is for us. He has our best interest in mind. His Amen. desire is to bless us. His desire is to give us life and life more abundantly. That is his mm -hmm. desire. The thief, the devil, Jesus said, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Amen. But I, Jesus speaking, have come to give you life and life more abundantly. That is his yeah. desire for you. And, and when Jesus taught us to pray in what we call the Lord's Prayer, we come to the Father and say, our Father. We come to him as our spiritual dad with that confidence that he loves us and that we could boldly come to him knowing that he wants the best for us. And he does. He Amen. does have the best in Amen. store Praise and God. mind for you. And in fact, the Bible says, and uh, it's uh, written in uh, 1 John chapter 5, <coughs> it is 14 and 15. And this is the confidence that we have in him or of him in Amen. him, that if we ask anything according to his will and asking for healing is according to his Amen. will. Asking to forgive your sins is according to That's his right. will. So if we ask anything according to his will, he, he hears. hears us. And yeah. if we know that he hears us, we, we have. know that we, we have. have those things that we have asked Amen. of him. It's not we might have, we could have, <laughs> we may have, Amen. but we have have it mm. is affirmative we have That's so right. believe believe that word trust god's word pre, uh, not pray god's word declare Do and declare. decree god's yep. word in your life mm. in your circumstances in your family in your home in your city your state or province and over your nation yeah. invite Amen. god's world invite god's kingdom his governance in your life, your home, your surroundings, mm -hmm. and in your nation. That's Amen. what we need. That's what we're doing. That's what we have been doing. That's what we're trying to encourage mm -hmm. people to mm -hmm. learn to do. Hallelujah. Yes. Well, praise God. We don't often have <laughs> Brother Albert on here with us, so we've gone a little long this <laughs> evening. We intended to mm -hmm. just have a 15-minute session, but it's been good. And, Amen. And, and some of you were not able to tune in in the beginning. You just tuned in. Uh, we're doing a special edition of Prayer for America. Tomorrow evening, we're doing a longer version at 5.30 mm -hmm. Pacific and 8.30 mm -hmm. um, East Coast time. And uh, we want you to join us and we want you to pray with us. And um, mm -hmm. hey, if the Lord leads you to fast a meal, uh, uh, fast the news, fast other things, <laughs> do <right>. that. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and join us and pray for America and pray for the nations okay. and we will be praying for your needs if you have a specific need you want us to bring uh, I just uh, I want to let you know that we will pray for that need if we get it yeah. after the broadcast we'll still pray for you and uh, and share this with other people because these prayers are not just effective during the moment when they are prayed That's right, right now they're just as effective when you re-watch this broadcast, when you share it and they watch it. And, and let me tell you, I was just sharing that testimony in the beginning, earlier in this program, that um, a brother in Ukraine that uh, was watching uh, last uh, weekend, he wasn't able to be in the live broadcast on Friday, mm -hmm. but he re-watched it on Saturday mm -hmm. and the Lord healed his knees. Uh, mm -hmm. And I mean, he couldn't use those knees. They were in great pain and he had to use those knees as a welder, uh, he carrying heavy equipment in that. And he said, boy, you know, he's a young man, uh, but just really loves the Lord, involved in the worship team in the church there and other activities. And he says the Lord healed him. And uh, he went through this whole week, not a bit of pain in those knees. And he said the whole week he had to do a lot of work on his knees more than ever. <laughs> but God touched him. God healed him. And it wasn't during the live broadcast. It was after he watched it afterwards. So share this with others. There is no distance in prayer. And there isn't a Amen. time confined to these prayers. That anointing that is on when we're praying is still there when you rewatch it. So share That's this. Right. 
right. and others. Amen. And um, and again, be a blessing to someone this Christmas. God is going to move in a powerful way. We're, we're, we're right there. We've been praying, the people have been praying for years for that great awakening, that great revival. It's coming. We're, we're, we're about to enter that. Be expectant. Amen. And, uh, keep believing keep trusting god oh, hallelujah yeah. brother albert any final words i keep saying final words mm -hmm. but <laughs> just uh psalm forty six ten. be still be still still your mind still your emotion especially your emotions because people can get carried away with their emotions and the devil uses people's emotions to manipulate them so when when the word of god says be still in psalm forty six ten. Be still and know that I am God. That means be still. Get everything still around you, your mind, your emotions, everything around you. Get get it still and trust God. That's basically what he means. And know know that he's God. You could, I guarantee you, you're gonna you're gonna see God move in such a way that there there will be no doubt that you'll know He is God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Anything else? Um, just remember, God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of Amen. power, love, and a sound mind. So God loves you, and do not fear. He surrounds you, and may He just may you feel His supernatural power around you today. And uh, Nina, what was the name of the person the Lord showed you? Cheryl. Cheryl. So Cheryl, if you tune in later or you watch later uh you know a cheryl who is sick and needs to be uh, god has uh, touched uh her. let him know to let her know to watch the program god has touched her god is healing. amen receive yeah. your healing and i just uh, felt to um bring up there was we had a prayer request of an eric uh, uh a friend's son who had dislocated his shoulder father in the name of jesus yes the, uh, eric to you and we yeah. believe Right now, that you are healing, you're putting things back in place, and that uh, that he's uh, that he's not in pain in the name of Jesus Christ, and and yes. Lord, others uh, also who had uh, asked for a prayer for various needs. Lord, we thank you that you are working in every one of them in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare that they are healed by the stripes of Jesus. They're asking us to pray for them in Kenya. Coronavirus is growing up every day. Uh, so let's. Look Lift up Kenya. We have, yes, uh, haven't had as much interaction with Kenya. We've been getting a lot of uh, reports from other parts of the world. Uh, but let's lift up Kenya right now. Uh, we've done a lot of work in Kenya, and uh, we know a lot of people there. We want to lift up um, the pastors, especially the leaders, but not just them. We want to lift up everyone who is in need of healing there. So, Father, uh, we just lift up oh, our Jesus. friends uh, and, and those we do not know in Kenya. Kenya, in right the name, now, in the name of Jesus, Jesus what's the word to bind that spirit in of Jesus, in Jesus. Spirit of infirmity through that virus, coronavirus, this virus, that are affecting and disrupting and, 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 and making sick people in Kenya. In the we name of them. Jesus Christ, we come yeah. against you yeah. and we command yeah. you that virus to die. Come out of that body, the come out of those in people country. in Jesus' name, right now, receive your healing, be healed. In the Jesus, name of they, God, yes, those that are sick, yes, be in the healed. Name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, be healed, right healed from that virus. Coronavirus in symptoms, Jesus' name. Um, from the symptoms of that virus in the name of Jesus. Curse that virus in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In other areas. Mombasa. In the name of Jesus. Get all over Kenya. In Jesus' name. Send your word, oh God. There is no distance in prayer. Be healed. Be healed. Protect be healed. your children in those in old Jesus. villages, Lord. In yes. Jesus. In the name of Jesus, that virus is cursed. In the name of that virus is dying. Those pastors put a shield of protection Jesus, around them. Mighty no mighty plague shall Thank come you, out of our dwelling. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We declare that Thank to be Jesus. true over your servants you. in Kenya yes. right now. In Tanzania. In Uganda. In other African nations. Somalia, Lord God. In Jesus. Thank you. Be healed. Ethiopia, Lord. Be healed Lord, in Canada, Jesus. Nigeria, Ghana, Togo, Be healed Liberia, in the name Morocco, of Jesus. Libya, South Africa, Zimbabwe, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Rwanda, in Jesus. Maui, in Jesus. In Jesus. 
Take your word right now. Thank the Lord. Heal by your power in the name of Jesus Christ right now. Oh, we judge that virus. Father, I send your word to Paul. Lord God, there are pastors who have so much during this lockdown. Father, we pray for encouragement for them. Jesus. Pray that you would supply their needs. And the all those pastors working with him. There is in the name of Jesus. We send your word. Encourage them. Strengthen in the them and use Jesus. them mightily. Give them boldness yeah. and Lord, meet their financial needs Father. as well in Jesus. Glory to your name. Thank Father, you. For... We pray for uh, yes. pastors and leaders throughout Ukraine and, and yes. Russia who have also in had the members of, of their church have come down with COVID. Some of the them have come down with COVID. Father, in the name, in of, the name of, Jesus of Jesus Christ, we come against that virus. We command it to die and leave in Jesus' name. In and Lord, we pray Jesus. that you would heal Thank totally and completely. Thank heal the lungs. Heal Thank the brain. Yeah. No brain fog. No Look. lung damage. No uh, organ damage. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' no name. Damage. In Hallelujah. Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Healing your word. Jesus you sent name. forth your word and That's healed them. Beyond. You took all their sicknesses. No evil should come near their dwelling, Lord. We just thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And don't, and don't, um, uh, you know, it's in uh, Job 33, Job 325, I think it is. And where it says, Job said, the thing which I feared has come upon me. And I, and I believe that a lot of times people, and I'm not blaming anyone uh, for this virus, but, but we have Psalm 91 says that no, that no evil shall come near your dwelling place. Psalm 91, 10, no evil shall come near your dwelling, no plague shall come near your dwelling. So if no God says that no evil uh, shall come near your dwelling and no plagues shall come near your dwelling, He means it, and and we and and we can't fear that because especially as believers, you know, in, in Job three twenty five, Job said the thing which I feared is to come upon me, and because he feared it, it came upon him. It like draws it draws Satan to 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 open yourself or your immune system. It's and it, a lot of it has to do with our minds that God has given us very uh, powerful minds that, that controls every, in fact, scientifically, the mind controls the brain, the brain, the mind, the thought life controls the brain and the brain controls every cell. 10, it speaks to every cell in the body 10 million times per second. That's scientific, that's science, you know? But if, if, if that's the case, then, and if you got fear in your, in your thought life, if you're afraid of something, afraid of getting the virus, you're basically, it, your, your, your thoughts are telling your brain to shut down your immune system. You can't fear these things because if you fear it, you draw it to yourself. And also not only draw it to yourself because the devil will give it to you, but you're also uh, turning down, turning off your immune system to fight it. And, and I believe that the, the immune system of a believer is, 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 is like we've just mentioned, uh, 1 John 4, 4, greater is he that's in us. Greater is he that's in us, the life, the eternal life, the power of God, the spirit of God that quickens our mortal bodies, it says in, in Romans chapter 8. It's in us. So that's what will resist. That's what will keep that virus away from you. As believers, we should know that. Amen. Amen. And, and, and uh, Brother Albert, would uh, uh, I know you, you, you often emphasize this, the importance of those who are spirit-filled, meaning they uh, not only can pray in their language, but they pray in the language that the Holy Spirit has mm -hmm. given them. Amen. Uh, those that know how to pray in other tongues. Uh, can you just talk about that and just very briefly about the importance of doing that, especially during this period of time? It's always important, but especially right now. That's right. Yeah, well, in, four, in 1 Corinthians 14, it, it talks about in the first four verses, it talks about he that prays in an unknown tongue. And, and I know maybe some of those watching may not understand or know that, but it is scriptural. It is something that God got, uh, you know, gave a whole chapter, the 14th chapter, first Corinthians to talk about it. And also he talks about it in Jude and in other places. But what it does when we pray in the spirit, which is praying in tongues, it, the script, it says that first uh, Corinthians 14, four says that he that prays in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men, but you're speaking to God. And then you have the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians, uh, 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 the first verse, I think it is, it says that um, 
it says that though we speak with tongues of angels, you know, is if we don't do it in love, it, it's like a tinkling sim symbol. But but my point is, it's 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 a tongue of angels. It's a it's a heavenly language, and we can't ref we can't deny that. We have to believe that and receive that. Everything we get from God is by faith. Everything, everything we receive God by everything, for revelation from God by faith. We do things for God by faith. We speak by faith. Everything we do, it has to, we live by faith, the scripture said. So uh, it has to be done by faith. But he that speaks in an unknown tongue is not speaking to man. And it also says in that same chapter of 1 Corinthians 14 is that uh, our understanding is unfruitful. In other words, that, that your spirit prays. It says, if I, Paul says, if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. That means you don't understand what you're saying. <coughs> Excuse me. And other people don't understand. But what you're doing, it says in the fourth verse of that 14th chapter of 1 Corinthians, it says, he that prays in an unknown tongue edifies or builds himself up, strengthens yourself, encourage yourself. And, what's, and, and when you're praying in tongues, it's not, um, it, you're speaking to God. You have to understand that you know, we are speaking to God in a language that that he ordained for each one of us to understand and to know, to be able to communicate to him. And, and, and in fact, it says in Romans chapter eight, also, I think it's verse 26, it says that that we don't know how to pray sometimes as we ought to. We pray, we can pray with our understanding, which means in our case, it's English. We can pray with our understanding and, and, and understand that we can pray for this, pray for that, pray for our country, our president, so on and so forth. But there are things that the only God, the Holy Spirit knows. He knows the heart of God. You know, it talks about in 1 Corinthians chapters 1 and 2. He knows the heart of God, especially chapter 2. He knows the Holy Spirit knows the heart of God. And it's he, the Holy Spirit, that is the one that prays with us and also prays. Uh, uh, gives us that language that we can communicate to God and God communicates back to us. And it's not coming to the, 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 the reciprocal revelation and, and, and communication with God is not coming to our understanding, our intellect. It's coming to your spirit and it's comforting. It's encouraging. It's, it's life. It's, it's building the life of God and the, the authority, the dominion, the confidence as a believer it's building that up in an individual. He who prays in an unknown tongue edifies himself, builds himself up, recharges, recharges himself. That's what it says. And also in Jude, the book of Jude, it's a one chapter book in the New Testament. The book of Jude, verse 20, I think it's verse 20. It says that he, building up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the spirit, in the Holy Ghost. That's, <clears throat> excuse me, that's praying in tongues. So you're also building uh, faith by praying in tongues and the reason why you're doing that because your your spirit is getting revelation knowledge of god's words god's communication god's word god's mm -hmm. word faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god you know romans 10 17 so you're if you're hearing your spirit's hearing communicating by you praying in the spirit praying in tongues communicating to god then your spirit is getting god's word inside you and that's why it's building it it will edify you and build your faith to trust God, to, to not walk in fear, to not walk in, in doubt or unbelief, but to walk in a confidence and a faith in God that will, that will, that will make the devil flee from you as in terror. Amen. Praise God. Well, uh, some people may not be filled with the Holy Spirit yet with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Yeah, Brother Albert, would you just briefly pray for them? I know we've never done that on, online like this, but why not? I mean, well, let, yeah, of course, absolutely. It's absolutely necessary. I mean, yes. uh, you, you know, we were, you know, if we're not baptized in the scripture says in John, the third chapter of John, it says, it says you can, we can't see the kingdom of God if we're not baptized by water and the spirit. So we, we, it, you know, we need to be baptized. And Jesus said in, in Acts 1, 8, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost. He says, don't go anywhere without that power. Don't go anywhere without that baptism, without the baptism of the Holy Spirit, because that's where the powers come from. That's where your strength is. That's where your 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 revelation, your your understanding of God and His ways comes from. The Holy Spirit through us communicating with God by the Spirit through the Spirit uh, in in a in a heavenly language, a, the uh, the tongue of angels, if you will. Mm -hmm. Which uh, desired 
to but be yes, so absolutely. So if you, uh, 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 those of you that are watching, if you haven't been baptized in the Holy Spirit, uh, and let me tell you this too, what, what, will, what will happen when you pray in tongues is that you will receive more understanding because you're praying, again, your, your spirit's community through tongues is communicating to God in a heavenly language, your spirit, not your intellect, but your spirit. And therefore you are receiving revelation from God of who he is and, 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 and just building yourself in strength. So uh, it's important though, uh, according to scripture, you know, it says um, like God, God, God expects us, excuse me, are you there? Okay. Yes. God expects us to, uh, to walk in forgiveness too. And, 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 and unforgiveness can quench everything. So if you're watching, I want you just to pray this little prayer with me. It's a simple prayer. Say, Lord, I ask you to come into my life to be Lord of my life. Lord, I, I believe that you died and resurrected for my justification. Lord, I repent and confess all my sins. And Lord, I, I ask you to come in to be Lord of my life. Lord, I also forgive. And this is very important. I, Lord, I forgive anyone and everyone that's ever hurt me in any way. And Lord, I just thank you that by, by, by a faith confession of, from my heart, I forgive them. And Lord, I just thank you for forgiving me. And now, Lord, I ask you to baptize me with the Holy Spirit. I receive him, the spirit of the living God, to help me, to comfort me, to strengthen me, to empower me. I receive the Holy Spirit right now by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. It's a simple prayer, uh, but it's an empowering prayer, very powerful prayer that can that can really build you up. And, uh, even the body of Christ, the, I, I would say about two thirds of the body of Christ do, uh, have forgotten or don't realize the importance or the uh, the power or the help by of, of praying in the spirit of how important that is and how much you can. It, it'll. it'll You'll get answers to everything by praying in tongues. And I don't mean, and let me tell you something, the devil will fight praying in tongues. Uh, he will fight you right up here and he'll fight you tooth and nail because he does not want you to get in, in, in communication with God in communing with God in his language, you know, uh, and, and receiving from God. You're not going, even though your, your intellect will tell you, well, boy, that was a waste of time. You are not wasting your time. It's spirit. It's spirit and it's life that's getting into your spirit. We have to realize we're spirit, soul, and body. That means your, your spirit, your, your soul is your intellect, your will, your emotions. And of course, we have a physical body. So it's your spirit that's getting uh, edified and built up and receiving knowledge and revelation from God. It's your, it says the, the carnal mind and the flesh that profits nothing. It's the spirit that gives life. And that's what you're getting when you're praying in tongues in the spirit. So it's very important to do that. And 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 if uh, you're in any kind of fear or doubt or whatever, uh, it it will it will flee. Uh, and like I said, the devil will try to fight you hook line. I mean, uh, uh, tooth and nail. Uh, mm -hmm. If you if you if you desire, uh, if when, once you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, uh, he'll try to fight that you know, saying, well, you're wasting time. I mean, that was what, but the thing is the, where you get the real, it's like drilling for oil. It, when you spend time, when, when you're drilling for it, you don't get oil at the top of, you know, when you first start digging, you know, when you first, first start drilling, you got to dig deep down in there. You got to spend time to do it, time to do that. And when you do that, that's when you finally hit oil. And I'll tell you what comes out in that oil. It's, it's the revelation, it's understanding, it's knowledge of God and his ways that comes out, but you have to spend time and the devil will fight, fight you in your intellect uh, uh, about that. And you have to just trust that, that when you do pray in tongues, that he is actually communicating with your spirit. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, uh, mm -hmm. I just want to mention for those that want to get more of Brother Albert's teaching, you could go to our YouTube channel and we've been recording him uh, in English with translation to Russian because we're putting uh, online our school of ministry. <coughs> and, um, we've been recording Brother Albert the last couple mm -hmm. of weeks. And uh, so you can go to the YouTube channel, which is a Gravage Global Vision Ministries, and uh, it's titled there. You'll find uh, Brother Albert Ramirez listed and teaching and uh, very powerful teaching. And uh, I'm not sure if he covered this area of teaching, but he's yes, got I did. 
Yes, you do. Okay. <laughs> portion. Uh, there you go. Uh, so you could get uh, this and you could uh, listen in more detail. And I wanted to remind you again, tomorrow evening we'll uh, be on Prayer for America at 5.30 p.m. Pacific, 8.30 p.m. East Coast mm -hmm. time. And uh, we were planning only going uh, 15 minutes tonight, <laughs> but uh, we just Thanks, went guys. over. We just went over by one it's hour. What's the give or take one hour was? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I tell you, I, I, I really sense God's presence on this on this uh, uh, this broadcast. I mean, I, I really sense God's presence. So, I mean, like you said earlier, to those watching it, uh, uh, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, there's testimony. I, I don't know if people are familiar with Catherine Kuhlman, but there was testimonies. This was after she died, you know, and years earlier, she 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 had a healing service in, in, in some church and they were playing it for students at a bible college and there were students there that were sick and and, and had all kinds, kinds of pretty tremendous ailments in their bodies but when they saw the video that anointing was still on there it's god's word it's god's presence the spirit of god that was inspiring her to speak so it was god's spirit that was still on that that videotape and people started getting healed students in that bible college got healed just from watching the tape just from watching and believing and the tape and the, and some people didn't even weren't even probably some of those Christian Bible <laughs> students were probably not even asking for be healed, but they got healed by the presence and the power of God on that broadcast. Well, I believe that we're getting, uh, uh, to that time when we're going to begin to see that greater manifestation mm -hmm. of God again. I've had the opportunity of ministering with some great men of God in many parts of the world, but let me tell you, God is getting ready to lift up a lot of people we've never heard of. Just uh, the other, that sister in church really got serious with God and really Amen. yielded his or her life to God and God began to use them. And Amen. that testimony of that, I was sharing, well, we we had a sister from China join mm -hmm. us on that service one week ago, and she was on with us earlier. Not sure if she's still on there or not, but um, uh, mm -hmm. it, God is using her. She just dedicated her life fully to God, and, and God began to use her. She goes on the streets uh, uh, in China, and... Amen. And people get healed uh and then she they wonder who and how in the world that, that this mm. happened and she says you know who did it he said no they're wondering if it's some sort of chinese hocus mm. pocus thing <laughs> no no uh, uh it, it's it's jesus uh, jesus christ healed you and they come to know jesus christ mm. as their savior and uh, we had a number of people healed there in ukraine i mean this was uh, I, uh we were here in the u.s she was in china and we were speaking mm. to people in ukraine and that broadcast last week as, as this week, uh, uh, it's, it was uh, transmitted live, not only in Ukraine, it was on uh, on uh, internet TV in Ukraine, as well as uh, being broadcast in Israel and in uh, uh, Germany and uh, to many parts of Russia and here in the U.S. people watch. So uh, God is touching, God is healing, and we know that this broadcast is being watched, not just in America, we have many uh, who are watching us in Canada, and uh, uh, we've been getting notes from uh, uh, people in Mexico, uh, Argentina, and uh, from uh, various parts of the U.S. and Cuba, uh, Cuba and mm -hmm. Ukraine, yeah. and uh, uh, Nepal, uh, China, as I mentioned, and um, uh, Africa uh, as well. In, yeah. in different parts of Europe, people have been watching us and uh, share this, share this, because this is important. This anointing is what people need right now. These prayers are prayers of breakthrough. And I mean, all this week long, we've had some powerful anointed breakthrough prayers uh, mm -hmm. for people with COVID, for people with arthritis, for people with other ailments. Go back and listen. Uh, you know, they're not very long, 15, 20 minutes, most of them. Mm -hmm. And and God, God, uh, moved powerfully and God moved powerfully tonight. And as brother Albert just said, he's still sensing that powerful anointing of the Holy spirit. So Amen. if you tuned in right now, uh, receive your healing right now, That's wherever right. you may be at it does. There is no distance in prayer. Amen. There's no distance limitations on the anointing of the Holy spirit. Brother Albert, do you feel to pray for anyone right now or, or to minister or any word of knowledge? I just, I just feel that what uh, that God's presence has just, just gone out from this broadcast, and I, I, I believe we're going to totally believe we're going to hear some tremendous testimonies. It's not me, it's not you, it's not Nina, it's, 
it's it's not like it says in uh was it uh zechariah 4 6 it's not by power nor by might but by his spirit and it's the spirit of god that's that's reaching out and touching these people watching tonight uh, all we are uh, is just god's servants and god's vessels you know to and god and god we are the habitation that talks about in in second chapter of ephesians uh i think in verse 22 we are the habitation of god you know in god we are his mouthpiece again uh and, and it's not only us i mean it's it's whoever gets born again or believers it, it, we are his mouthpiece you can share with a neighbor you know you can say well i'm not a minister you know well you don't have to be a minister all you have to do is believe god you know and 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 believe what he's done in you and through you and to be able to share that and to share the love of God and, and, and share what, you know, you can only share what, you know, and again, like I said, through tongues, you can, you can come to know a lot of things, get a lot of revelation from God by praying in tongues for long periods of time. I'm talking about hours. So, um, but you, you'll get so much revelation. You won't be able to handle it all. Uh, I, I, this, I can guarantee that I'll guarantee that you know there's a guy who used to sell suits around he says i guarantee it's the best suit you well i guarantee you will get so much revelation from god if you pray in tongues for more than an hour jesus exhorted his disciples when they went up to the mountain to pray with him and he was transfigured he said could you not pray with me one hour one hour so i mean at least an hour in tongues you know that i, I try to at least go that way Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Yes. Uh, and um, God is moving by his spirit. And uh, we know that uh, God is impressing on all of us to pray, to believe. And it's not just repeating some sort of uh, cliches or just some sort of uh, quote unquote magic words. There's no such thing. It's speaking God's word. God's Amen. word is powerful. And when you pray, pray God's word. And just what you're doing is you're reminding God of his covenant. You're reminding God of his word. And God is, uh, is, is honors his word, his covenant. What he Amen. said, he will fulfill. He's not a man that he should lie. And so uh, when we speak God's word, when we pray, it's not just praying a bunch of whatever, but praying God's word to say, Lord, this is what your word says. We declare, we decree that your word is true in my life, in, in my family, in my children, our, our, my grandchildren, my home, my city, my town, my country. So you, you, get God involved in every right. area. So when you pray, for example, the Lord's prayer, your kingdom come, your will be done. Say in my life, in my wife, my Amen. children, my home, my circumstances, you invite us, Lord, to say your kingdom come. And then you start praying for the area you live in, the state and the or province, the country you live in. You invite his lordship, his rulership, and he does get involved. And we've been praying. We've been praying for America. Right. We've been praying for the nations. And God is answering prayer. Those have been seeds that we've been planting and planting and planting. And those seeds are producing results. You know, when you plant that little tiny seed, you don't see anything for a while, but it's there in the ground. It begins to rearrange the soil, right. Sister Marcy said. It, it, it breaks open that shell. It starts to grow, starts sending a root. And, and I, you know, I was sharing the other day how we have some very industrious squirrels around our property every year after after the rains are over in spring i have to go pulling out hundreds of little oak trees all over the property otherwise we'll be in a jungle here uh and and let me tell you we live in a very rocky uh soil uh here it's very difficult to plant some but those acorns those squirrels put in the ground when that that little that acorn uh, breaks open and that root comes out i mean if i don't catch it when it's uh mm -hmm. when it gets this big it's already hard to pull it out of the ground and if it gets this big forget it i can't even i have to cut it i can't pull it out mm -hmm. it's so strong in the ground and, and and so when you pray you are sowing seed you are planting and and that that takes root and that root it gets into that soil and there's nothing that's going to stop that tree from growing and, and you know you plant one little seed but let me tell you then you get a bush or you get a tree and you get a lot of fruit. You get a lot. You plant one seed, but you get a lot back. And that's the way it is in prayer. That's it, uh, the way it is in giving to God. And uh, that is the way, one of the God's principles, give and it Amen. will be.
given unto you. A good measure, press down, shake it together, and running over. So Amen. you plant that little seed, but then uh, you know, it might be a tomato seed, but then you get a, a bush, you get a plant, and then you get a bunch of tomatoes, so, or a tree with a bunch of oranges, or whatever it is. So, um, so mm -hmm. plant good things, plant good deeds, plant grace, plant love, plant mm -hmm. uh, oh. hope in people's lives, and speak God's word, speak positively into your life, into the mm -hmm. lives of other people, to your children and grandchildren. Why? Because your words have power. Uh, death and life are in the power of the tongue. So uh, whatever things are good, honest, of good report, think on these things. Speak on these things, right? Amen. 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 So turn off that uh, negative news out there and, <laughs> and, and spend more time with the yeah. Lord and his word and listen That's to right. good teaching and good prayer and good broadcasts like this. Amen. Amen. Right, Albert? Amen. Amen. And I'm sorry to tell you, my battery's going to go off in a short little well, while. You know, like I said, we were just going to go for uh, 15, 20 minutes. We only went over. Praise uh, God. Uh, praise, and our, praise God. God is good. God richly bless Thank you. you. Amen. And we will, uh, uh, we invite you all to join us tomorrow evening. We expect Brother and Sister Abrams, Sister Marcia Lewaki, tomorrow evening at 5.30 p.m. Uh, on uh, Facebook Live here. That's 5.30 Pacific, 8.30 mm -hmm. Eastern. And God richly bless you. Share, Amen. share, share. Remember, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen.